Even though it's been a throwback kind of Sunday, we've got a brand new imaginative prayer from Jared Patrick Boyd's imaginative prayer book that goes right along with our theme that God rescues us from sin. So go ahead and close your eyes, and let's take a few deep breaths together. God, I pray that you would open our imaginations, open our minds to help us to see and hear what you want us to see and hear today. Make our thoughts and our hearts sensitive to your Holy Spirit's leading. Amen. All right. Imagine with me that you're in the middle of a deep forest and you're surrounded by trees. You're standing in front of a giant cave. The entrance to the cave is right in front of you. It's a large cave, perhaps one in which a dragon or a great beast might live inside. The cave seems dark, but you're curious about what lies beyond the entrance of the cave. Is it a deep cave? Is there in fact something living inside? You decide you want to find out what is inside. So you take courage and you move to the front of the cave. Imagine you have some rocks in your hand and you throw the rocks into the darkness of the cave. You hear a faint echo calling back to you from the rocks hitting the floor. This is a deep and dark cave. And the darkness feels almost like a thickness in the air. A bad smell is coming from the cave. As you make your way deeper inside the cave, the smell gets worse. It almost becomes difficult to breathe. Imagine walking down a dark trail that curves around and around, heading deeper into the cave. There's a great power inside this cave. There's something like gravity or a great magnet pulling you deeper into the cave. And the smell's getting worse. It's becoming more and more difficult to breathe. You try to turn around and walk the other way, but you can't. The force is too strong. The power is too great. You feel powerless to escape the cave. You feel trapped. Imagine now that you reach the center of the cave and you see that there is a giant wall at the end of the cave. And on the wall, Hang seven faucets, just like the faucet from your bathroom or your kitchen sink, or maybe like the faucet where you connect your hose when you want to play in the sprinkler or water the garden. This giant wall with faucets is a strange sight. Each faucet is the size of a car. Imagine looking at these seven giant faucets just mounted on the wall of the cave. Pouring from each of the faucets is a thick colored liquid. Each faucet has a different color coming from it, but it isn't just a trickle flowing out of the faucets. It's like a rushing waterfall. Imagine colored water rushing out of each faucet. These are powerful faucets and the water rushes together into giant pool. The stink is from the pool. As the liquid mixes together, there's a mist, a gas that fills the air around you. It rises up like steam rises when you take a warm bath or shower. Imagine looking into the pool and seeing all the colors mixed together. The pool is dark and murky and smelly. 
as you look at each faucet, you now notice that each faucet has a label. It's a large wooden sign hangs on each faucet and a word seems to be written on each. It's too dark in there to read them. But you remember you have a flashlight in your pocket. Take out the flashlight and shine light on the signs. The first one says lust. Lust is a word that describes when our desire, we want something, and it's so much stronger than it should be. Sometimes we list after things that we want just a little too much. And when we desire something so much that it feels like there's a power drawing us to that thing, that's called lust. The second one says gluttony. Gluttony is a word that means taking too much. Sometimes we have too much of something, too much food, too much TV, too much activity. We have gluttony when we're wasteful. The third faucet says greed. You know what greed means. It's like lust and gluttony, but greed is when you keep wanting more. Greed is when you want more and more and more and more, all for yourself. You move on to the fourth faucet, which says sloth. Sloth means laziness. It's a funny word that describes what it's like to not want to do anything. Experiencing sloth is like having important work to do and instead deciding to just lie down and ignore the work. You shine your light on the fifth faucet. It says wrath. Wrath means excessive and violent anger. Wrath is what people, what makes people fight and kill each other. Wrath is anger that won't go away. The sixth faucet sign says envy. Envy is when you're discontent with what you have. We envy when we look at someone else and what they have, and we want it for ourselves. Envy is feeling sad when someone else has something better than us. And now the sign in the last faucet with the colored sludgy water pouring out says pride. Pride is when you feel so good about yourself or even just think so much about yourself and your own accomplishments that you compare it to others. It's the opposite of humility. We have pride when we rely too much on ourselves and not enough on God's grace. You step back from the faucets and watch the powerful waterfalls pouring into the pool below. You feel icky and the air is smelly and now it really is becoming difficult to breathe. Imagine there's a giant wheel in the corner of the cave and you wonder if this is the way to turn off all those faucets. All these faucets have bad things pouring out of them. Bad and powerful things. Imagine trying to turn the giant wheel, which looks like the wheel of a giant, like, captain, or the, the captain of a large ship might use in, to turn a boat. It's too heavy. You aren't able to turn it. But now, imagine looking beside you and realizing Jesus is there. He's standing right behind you. And imagine stepping back from the wheel to make room for Jesus to try to turn off the faucet. Jesus steps up and he turns the wheel. And all the faucets shut off. Immediately, completely, 
There's a wonderful, calm feeling in the cave now. The cave fills with light and fresh air. Imagine taking a deep breath and breathing a sigh of relief. Now that Jesus is there with you, there's a sweet smell filling the entire cave now. Jesus is the king who came to undo the power of death. And he's the king who came to defeat the power of sin.